Hi there and welcome back to our week two of our research project on Japan. I hope you all enjoyed last week's introduction. I'm really looking forward to us getting stuck into the geography and culture of Japan itself this week. Have a look at the guide to Japan that's been attached alongside this video. Um, and it's got lots of information there in there in pictures about the culture, about the life, the vibrant, bustling cities and the stunning nature. Um, it, they're amazing that for a country the size of Japan, there's so much variety, even though Japan is larger in size than, in the, U than the UK is. Last time we learned that Japan is on the continent of Asia. Today's session is all about Japan's features and look at more, a little bit more at where it's located in Asia. But next time we're going to really dive into uh, the culture of Japan and how it became the unique place that it is. First, a quick activity to get us started and a reminder of the things that we looked at last week. Uh, I want you to have a go at finishing this sentence. Japan is located. Remember all the facts that about the continent, the oceans, etc. that we looked at last time uh, when trying to complete that sentence. It's absolutely fine if you need to go back and remind yourselves. How did you get on? Um, give yourself a mark for each of the points on the screen that you have included. So mark to say if you've put Japan is located in Eastern Asia, Japan is located in close proximity or near to the Pacific o Ocean, Japan is located in the Northern Hemisphere, if you remember hemisphere being the two halves of the world that are bound by the equator, and Japan is located off the coast of China. Now let's map the main physical features of Japan. Don't worry if you don't know them, um, the detail is to follow, but what we're going to do is we're going to label the four main islands in Japan. We're going to find and plot the locations of the main cities, get a pencil, use some shading of the lowland and the highland and then look at where the volcanoes of Japan are. If you want a bit more of a challenge uh, then you're going to have a go at labelling the seas and oceans that surround Japan as well. There are four main islands in Japan, although there are over a thousand islands in the country in total. We've got Hokkaido in the north, Honshu is the main island and where the capital of Tokyo can be found, Shikoku is the smallest island and Kyushu is the furthest south. Japan's located on quite an unstable point in the Earth's crust and is frequently hit by earthquakes as well as there being home uh, to several active volcanoes. Here's a little bit more about the physical geography of the main islands. Um, you'll see that even more than here in the UK the climate changes so much within one country it's amazing. We've got snow-capped mountains on the north island of Hokkaido down to hot springs and tropical forests in the south on Kyushu. Looking at these descriptions, which island would you like to live on?
have a little think about that because we are going to be covering that later on. But before we leave this slide, take your focus to the main island of Honshu. Notice how mountainous it is. The whole centre of the island is upland and the coastal areas are the only lowland or flat areas to be found. From what you've learned previously um, in geography about settlements and how they develop, have a think. Why is Tokyo where it is and why did it become the capital city? An activity here for everybody. Um, have a go at answering that question. Where do you think the majority of people live in Japan and why? Um, little interesting fact here that might help you. 90% of the land almost is covered by mountains. So it should give you some indication of where people are living and why. If you want a bit more of a challenge, I want you to describe in a little bit more detail below um, the reasons behind where uh, most people live in Japan, thinking particularly of how the upland and lowland areas are distributed around the country. So thinking about where there's mountains and where there's flat land. Have a go. Earlier, I asked you to start thinking about which island you'd like to live on because of its climate and physical features. Uh, I'd like to return to that now and start to put together an answer. Whichever island you pick, think carefully about the reasons for choosing it. And as a challenge, I want you to add in any additional information you've been able to find out about the climate and physical features. I've done a slide on how to get the best marks on this bit of the project. If you start from naming the islands and build up, adding one reason, then another, um, and can explain why each of these reasons led you to think you'd like to live there, then you'll get the full four points. This question is actually from a GCSE um, geography paper. So for those of you who would like the challenge of tackling work at GCSE level or are interested in doing geography at GCSE level, um, this will give you some indication of what is expected of you. So have a go. And here we are at our last slide. Um, as the same as last week, if you've used any interesting websites or any other sources to find out any of the information you've used uh, during this session, make sure you write them uh, below if you're doing it on a work pack or just cut and paste the links if you're um, doing this online and put them into this slide. It may come in handy to have them as a record for future sessions or to share with others when we're all back together again. Hope you enjoyed it.